Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Write or Die show. I'm your host, Randy Lee Bosla. On the show, we interview other writers and we talk about mental health from their personal journeys. If you have not already hit that like and subscribe button, go ahead, do that now so that you never miss an episode. Welcome, everybody. So today on the show, we have Linda Plunkett. How are you? I'm great. How are you, Randy? I'm pretty good. And, you know, we were having a little technical difficulty so I'm hoping that I figured them all out <laughs> um so where are you joining us from it looks sunny there it is I'm in Tampa Florida what about you I mean it's probably a beautiful 75 degrees right now I don't think I like you anymore <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm in Ontario um Canada. oh Okay. The, the most southern part of it. So, like, the sun is out, but it's really windy. And oh, uh, do you have any snow up there? Uh, no, we've had very little snow this winter, at least like where I am. If you go further north, then sure. But I'm in this perfect little spot where we often don't get a lot of snow. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah, cold. You know, cold. Cold weather isn't so bad if you don't have a lot of snow. I grew up in Ohio and we would have two or three feet at one time. I think that's you literally got worse snowed in. Here. So I really am enjoying Florida. Yes, yeah, definitely. I think I would prefer Florida though, just you know, because it's much warmer than here. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. It is. We get we're very spoiled, I must say that. Yes. So other than living in Florida, tell us who is Linda? Well, I'll tell you, my life has really changed in the last 10 years. 10 years ago, um, I was a psychologist. I had a practice and helped people, individual issues, marriage issues. And I had two children, raised two children. And life was pretty, pretty, what I would call normal. Um, I've always enjoyed travel. I'm a ballroom dancer. I compete in ballroom dancing. Continue cool. to do that. Uh, but I played off, but you know, life was pretty normal. And then about 10 years ago, things really dramatically changed. And really my life has never been the same since. Oh, I feel like that's what we're going to talk about. I think so. <laughs> wow. So, um, ballroom dancing. Eh? That's kind of cool. I have not met somebody um, who did ballroom dancing, especially competing in it. How long have you been doing it for? Oh, for on and off about 15 years. And um, basically, it is great for your body. It keeps you in shape. It's great for your brain. Uh, they've even done studies now that say people that are like an early dementia or Alzheimer's, that ballroom dancing or really any kind of lead and follow dancing yeah. can help your, it helps you recover from things that might be affecting you mentally. So that's exciting oh. news for a lot of people. That's so cool. So everybody pick up some ballroom dancing. Actually, there's a ballroom dance studio um, in St. Catharines, which is just like a city over from me. And we've driven past it. And I say to my husband, like, we should go take ballroom dancing classes. And he's like, no. Like, oh. wow. But you know what? <laughs> Most of those places, the good news is you can go by yourself. And, and they like have it. people for you to dance with. And yeah, I mean, it can be a lot of fun. And for me, you know, I've been to the gym and dancing is just more fun than going to the gym. Not 100%. saying you should. percent. But it's more fun. Yeah. And on that topic of fun, oftentimes we talk, when we're talking about mental health and coping strategies, exercise comes up. And I always tell everybody there's so many different forms of exercise so there is another one right there ballroom dancing I don't think we've mentioned it before on the show so perfect you know it's very interesting you should mention that because in my new book I have a chapter on various kinds of exercise and their effect on the brain and it's very interesting that dancing has a really study show a more positive effect on your brain than any other form of exercise so really? that's all the more reason to get right. Yes. Maybe it's like the combination with the music and the rhythm flow. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up. Well, the brain has to focus on both, you know, remembering steps, but also say you're with a partner and he's leading you. You have to be very aware that he may not lead you the same way every time. 
you have to think, you know, and you're also anything, anything you can do for your brain that helps it grow with dancing, at least in my situation, being competitive, I'm always trying to up my game. I want to get better. I want to improve. And so that's exciting because, you know, you, you, you do more lessons, you improve, and then you compete at a higher level. Yeah. And then when you're successful at that, you know, it's kind of like a, a feel good thing. Oh, I like this. I like this. So we've already kind of traversed the bridge into mental health. So we're just going to keep trucking down this path here. Um, start your story, whatever makes the most sense. Okay, well, as I said earlier, my life I felt was fairly normal, ups and downs, but you know, nothing really way out there. And then uh, the end of 2012, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor. And the tumor was the size of a tennis ball in the frontal lobe of my oh, head that's, yeah. and required immediate surgery. I mean, they had to cut my head open from ear to ear. And so oh, that involved in almost eight, eight hour brain surgeries, which was really devastating. You know, like I tell people, I'm a psychologist. I really wanted to be in denial, but I couldn't be. You know, I, I had to expect this was happening and it was happening like now. But yeah, I felt like, you know, there's a small part of you. You just don't want to believe it, you know. Right, because it's exactly. Extreme thing, you know, to happen to you. So, um, so how did but, they figure out that you had it? Like, were you having symptoms and you went to the doctor or... Yes, in a way. And the funny thing was, I didn't have a clue. And my husband didn't have a clue. And I think sometimes husbands are the last ones to notice things. But I was mm -hmm. having lunch with, <laughs> you know that, right? Uh, I was having lunch with my son and a friend that I hadn't seen in a long time. And we came back from lunch. And, and you know, they were talking to my husband, Jim, and they said, you know, there's something not right with her. And they agreed, you know, that I just didn't mm -hmm. seem the same conversation wasn't like a normal conversation but yet I didn't have a clue and my husband didn't have a clue mm -hmm. and so I went to my job she says you know it's probably nothing but you know I really think you should have an MRI so mm -hmm. they did the MRI um the other crazy thing that happened when they did the MRI I had a panic attack never had a panic attack in my life but had from a going into the machine in the or inside the machine and there again I'd never been claustrophobic or anything like that but my head started like pounding and I'm feeling pain so all loud. over my body well and it is and I said please let me out and she wouldn't let me out she said we're almost done she wouldn't let me out but anyway that was very freaky so that probably told me something wasn't right yeah but sure enough they found a tumor and it's the size of a tennis ball and it's right in the front of my head and the other thing was they said you know, the fact that you were acting out, your behaviors change, that means you're having seizures. And so I had to immediately have a, um, I forget the name of the surgery, but it's basically where they had to cut my head open and take the tumor out. And so, um, yeah, very, you know, that was just very surreal. Like, I can't believe it's happening. Yeah. And then not knowing I survived because a lot of people don't make it through brain surgery. Yeah, I don't know what the percentage is. Oh, so scary. Yeah, most people I know of that they know somebody had brain surgery, you know, they're not here to talk about it. So, um, yeah, it was it was very scary. And so then uh, the surgery was supposed to last three to four hours, but because of complications, it lasted almost eight. And, um, you know, like I said, it just totally changed my life. I did make it through the surgery. I was really messed up for a long time mentally, physically. Spiritually, I was just totally messed up and um, went to a major medical clinic a few months after that, learned to walk again. I couldn't stand. I had no balance. Oh. I had to learn to walk. Think um, my brain just wouldn't function, you know, just wasn't normal, just struggled, you know, really struggled mentally, but went to this major medical institution in my area. And yet being a psychologist, I was used to doing testing and like, I do the right tests. I can help people. I can figure out what I need to do to help them. So I'm there like all day having tests and I go back and I'm in shock. They say, Linda, there's nothing we can do for you. And I'm just like, I cannot believe it. Yeah, I know. And they're the, like the biggest medical institution in our area. There's nothing we can do for you. And the, the sad thing is they really did not have any clue what to do or where to send me. 
And so, you know, it was kind of a scary place, but, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, even though I, I had struggles and the book is also, my new book is also about my struggles spiritually, my struggles physically, my struggles mentally, emotionally, but also spiritually. But somehow I knew that there's a reason I'm still alive. You know, that God mm -hmm. wouldn't just leave me like this in this mess. There had to be a way out. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I gradually found ways to get better. I read books, you know, I tried to talk to people. It was very, very, very slow. But then the other bad news that came later that year was one morning I wake up and I think I'm getting better, but I wake up, I have pain all over my body and then I can't sleep anymore. So the, the pain gets worse, the sleep gets worse and it's like an unending cycle. So I try another doctor and thinking, you know, what is it? You know, this pain, this is crazy. Do I have arthritis? Mm -hmm. And the doctors have fibromyalgia. You had a trauma to your head. And because of the trauma to your body, people, that's why people get fibromyalgia. And it just blew my mind because then nobody could find any treatment for the fibromyalgia. Yeah, that's where I'm at in life right now. And it sucks. Well, you have to read my new book. You have to do it. I'll tell you. The reason, the first book, I mean, there were miracles. There were things happened in Supernatural Rescue that I cannot explain. And like I tell people, well, you, you can believe it or not believe it. I realize some people, you know, they believe, some people they don't believe. But like the first book, Supernatural Rescue, I literally felt that God rescued me at one point when I was dying. And I believe that I saw like an angel. But there were, you know, just things happened that I can't explain. But, you know, the fibromyalgia was so, 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 so hard. I thought I found a, a pill to take at the end of writing the first book and it didn't last and the results didn't last. And so, um, but I started to find other ways to get better. And people said, Linda, what are you doing? How are you doing so well? Because everybody I know that has fibromyalgia, the doctors don't get it. They don't know how to treat it mostly. <laughs> and, you know, it's like, what do you do? And, but I found a lot of ways to get well. But also, I felt like, you know, with the pandemics, people are living in fear. So I want to also include being a psychologist, how to deal with fear, how to deal with stress, how to deal with. Um, you know, living in a really negative world, how to be positive when all this negativity is around you. And then also people such as myself that had ups and downs with their faith and God and feeling God had left them or God didn't love them. And so I tried to put this all into like a new book. And, but really, the new book was for a lot of my friends that said, Linda, you're doing so well. Tell us what you're doing. Tell us what you're doing and how you got better. But the title of the new book is called Living a Positive Life in, in a Negative World, My Uphill Journey. And I'm so okay. excited because I got the good morning. My book will be out in another week. And another week, it should be available through Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. That's awesome. So that's and by the time this posts, it will be out. So, Oh, that's awesome. But, you know, so many people, and it's not just fibromyalgia, but I, I had to do a lot of research on my own. And I, you know, there again, I give credit to God because I probably wouldn't be alive. And people say, Linda, you probably shouldn't be here. When they hear what I've been through and I've spoken to cancer survivors, a lot of different groups, people tell me, you know, we have not had it as bad as you have. So I know, you know, that my pain was meant for a purpose and I believe it's to help other people. And to encourage other people through it. But the whole first part of the book is aimed to help people going through pain and suffering. And like chronic pain, chronic fatigue, sleep issues. And the suggestions I offer in the book, I I have mentioned some to people. And those feeling bad enough, you will do anything. Because that was where I was. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. With, with it has to do with exercise, certain types of exercise. It has to do with what you eat and what you don't eat, your diet, how you take care of your body. And there again, the emotional and spiritual end as well. So although there's three parts of this book that may be three different audiences, I really believe there's something in this book for everybody. And with coming out of the pandemic, I've seen so many people living in fear and they can't get out of that fear mm -hmm. cycle. Like, you know, they're yeah. afraid. And, you know, they're afraid they're going to get sick or they're afraid this is going to happen or that is going to happen. So there's some really good tools just for dealing with this crazy world that we live in, that we all have to live in and we all have to get from one day to the next. But exactly. I do want to do not give up. There were points, I'm totally honest, 
I asked God, why am I still alive? And why am I even here? And I felt I was being punished. It's a long story and it's all in the book. But So that's what um, I want to touch on a little bit more. But before we come to the end. So you're talking about the the moments that you're like, why am I still here? So obviously you were in a very dark place. Um, Very dark, yes. So can, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Because that's that's very much what this show is about. And, you know, being in a dark place, how did you get out of it? And, you know, that kind of thing. Well, I think, you know, I'm embarrassed to say that I said some things that, you know, I feel were probably selfish at the time. But, you know, I got through the brain surgery, but the pain and the suffering, which went on not weeks or months, but several years just dealing with that and battling that, I really questioned, why am I still here? Because at that point, I couldn't really go back and and operate my practice the way I wanted to. Mm -hmm. I couldn't always function well, I wasn't getting sleep, you know, and it puts you in a bad mood. And then you don't like yourself, you don't like, you know, you realize you're not always nice to other people. And you start having a form of self hatred, which that's very hard to admit. But, you know, you don't recognize, you look in the mirror and it's somebody else. I put on 50 pounds from the steroids. So I had a lot of weight, but I had to, you know, I just basically made up my mind that I couldn't stay in that place. And that if God kept me alive, it had to be for a reason. And, you know, what I tell people, I don't know why, you know, I went through this not knowing why, like, am I being punished? Should I do something wrong? My husband kept saying, no, you've helped a lot of people. I counseled through a nonprofit. I did mission trips. I did prison ministry. I fed the homeless. I did, I've done a lot of different things, which I tried to reach out and help other people and live the best life. But my life was going really, really bad. And I didn't know why. But, you know, another chapter in this book, which I think is important, and I'll just mention that it's about perseverance. And I think a lot of us, we don't want to, you know, sometimes you want an easy way out and there isn't an easy way out. But I want to encourage people not to give up hope. I thought, you know, when I started studying quotes for this book and for the chapter on perseverance, I love some of the quotes because they're real life. Like, for example, Winston Churchill, I believe it was Winston Churchill who said, if you feel like you're in hell, you wake up, you feel like you're in hell. You don't know why. You don't know what you've done, and it makes no sense. But I will tell you, if you persevere, And sometimes you have to be your own advocate. When doctors can't help you, go online, do your own research, talk to people, do not give up. I have learned so much information that I've shared even with doctors, with medical people that they did not know. But you, I mean, there's a world of information and it's not necessarily in traditional medicine. I've gone to alternate, uh, alternate forms of medicine and, um, I've gotten tremendous help through other forms of medicine that my doctor would not, probably would not even recommend. It might not be covered under insurance. But I'll tell you, if you feel better, if you're able to live your life more productively, whatever you can go out there and find, it's worth it. And the good news, if you keep persevering, at the end of the story, you will make it. And also, you'll be able to help other people which has kind of been what's happened to me. I didn't get it for a long time, but I realized going through everything I've been through. Now I have tools. People are calling me. People are texting me and saying, Linda, I need this. Can you help me? Can you help me? And I'm able to help them in ways they can't help themselves because of all the personal research I've had to do with my own situation. So there was a reason, but could I see it when I was going through it? No, it didn't make any sense. But you got to keep on going. You know, you've got to not give up hope. But also for me, you know, my faith did help because I believe in the verse that says we have a God who can do immeasurably more in us than what we think or imagine. And that has to do with miracles, Mm -hmm. you know, and I've seen visions and I've had dreams. I've had things I can't explain. But the more you seek God, the more he is available to you. And I know that's a process and it's different for everybody. But sometimes it just means out calling out to him and saying, God, I need you. I need you. And I've had to do that. And I felt in my weakness, he got me through things I could not do by myself. And he continues to do that. You know, my life, life is not a picnic. It's not perfect. Having said that, it's a lot better than what it was a few years ago. And I am grateful 
although there, there's still there's issues that I have that may never go away. That's okay. I'm alive and I'm able to do things I couldn't do a few years ago. So I am thankful and I'm trying to count my blessings in spite of the bad things that have happened and sometimes continue to happen. I love that. Um, okay, so you you mentioned your book a whole bunch. Tell us the name of it again. Okay, it's called. I'm gonna just hold it up. This is my trial copy. Let's it's see. called a little, a little bit higher. A little bit higher. higher there we go. There, we go. perfect. Living a positive life in a negative world, my uphill journey, and um, I think a lot of people are in a negative world, but this book is meant to give people tools, physical tools for their body, emotional tools for their mood, their brain, getting through the hard things. And then the tools also, if you've had an up and down relationship with God and you just want to be able to draw more, more from him. So I think there's three parts. Like I said, people will read this and they will definitely get something out of the book, no matter what part they read. Excellent. And we're all in a different place. I struggled writing one book. And it, when I wrote parts one and two, my publisher, my editor said, you could have finished it right there. But, you know, I felt I couldn't. It didn't give justice to the spiritual side, which oh, really kept me going through the whole. Okay. Yeah. You had to bring it all back together. Exactly. Excellent. And uh, so that's going to be available. Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, you said. Yes. By the time you're, you said you're, um, you actually put this online or whatever. And um, I am available for speaking. I love to encourage people in person. And, you know, I never know what people are going through. But when I share my story, people cry. But I think it's because they relate to the pain. But you know what, it's good to know you're not alone in that pain, because a lot of us can feel so alone. And I think it's very important we be there for each other. Yes exactly and that is why we do this show um all right and Great. where do people follow you well i have a website now i will tell you it's being worked on hopefully by the time the broadcast comes out it will be completed it's being updated but it's at linda l-i-n-d-a middle initial s plunkett p-l-u-n-k-e-t-t dot com and that's my website and probably the best place that you you can um, find all the information in one spot. And um, there's also a dance video there that you might enjoy viewing because I was given a dance award a few years back for encouraging, inspiring other people by a big, a big dance competition with Mary Murphy, who used to be on TV and Michael Chapman. So that was probably one of the more exciting parts of the good that's come out of the bad. Mm -hmm, so to that's say. cool. Yeah. I was wondering. But, yeah, but you know, it's like, I think people need to know that many times as bad as it is, there is good that can come out of that and just not to give up, but to keep going. And um, put yourself around positive people as much as you can. We may live with negative people, we can't control that. But we can control who we have as friends and who we communicate with. And I think, you know, we've got to keep our heads above water because the world around us can be so negative, sadly. You know, that's a sad thing, but it's the way it is. Exactly. So thank you so much for being on the show, for sharing with us. Um, normally, I ask one last You're question, but you've kind of summed it all up. So I'm going to do it anyway. Is, um, and it's probably going to be a repeat, but that's okay. So what would you say to somebody who is listening right now and they are... Feeling chronic pain, because that hasn't come up a lot in, in the show yet. Well, first of all, I would say don't give up. If you can get a copy of my book, you might find some things in there you did not know. These are things I had to search and find for myself. No doctor recommended the things that I'm putting in this book. So that's one step. But another step I really believe is you've got to be your own advocate. Go online, read books, do research into your own condition, but, but you'd be surprised what will pop up online. I mean, articles from all over the world. And, you know, the interesting thing about fibromyalgia, I just wanted to tell you this, um, 
because I researched my first book 2016 and I researched again. Doctors are still arguing and still not in agreement to what it is and how to treat it. However, there is a study that just came up in 2022 and I mentioned it in my book, a brand new study, um, where which gives credence to there again, therapies and treatments that are out of the box that I had to, I had to try some things that were out of the box that really helped me, but no doctor recommended those things. So I would just say, whatever, do not give up and just keep, keep looking, keep searching and God willing, you're going to find the answers to your questions. Keep on keeping on. That's right. Excellent. Well, thank you again so much. We're going to stick the links down in the description below so people can easily get to your website and then get a hold of your book. Because, yes, it is out now because we have now been a couple weeks since we recorded and it is out. Go get it. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate your time and having me on your show. Thank you. As always, thank you so much for the amazing guests that we have on the show. Um, be sure to check out their links down in the description below. If you want to support the channel, go ahead and check out our merch store. We've got some very cool things on there. That's my favorite. Sorry, I'm busy ending the stigma. Um, but there's some other very cool designs. 10% of the proceeds always goes back to the Canadian Mental Health Association. Be sure to follow us on Facebook at RV Media because we have some great new shows coming up and you never want to miss any of those episodes. And remember, the only way to end the stigma of mental health is to speak openly and honestly. Bye!